So seizures in the newborn is obviously a very common topic among um, healthcare providers in the NICU, and it's something of debate. Unlike any other age group, we get asked, why are you treating the seizures in a newborn? Should we be treating the seizures in a newborn? Which I find fascinating because this is not a question ever posed to us as neurologists in the two-year-old or the 40-year-old. But we are asked that question and is actually the topic of a lot of research um, in the newborn infant when it comes to the brain. So when we use the word seizures, there's actually different um, ways that that terminology can be referred. Typically, when people are talking about seizures, they're talking about clinical seizures, the seizures you can see. As a neurologist, I actually think of seizures as not just clinical, but also electrographic, meaning the stuff I can see on an EEG. So when a patient is seizing, they can have what we call electroclinical seizures, meaning a clinical manifestation of something that is associated with seizures in correlation with an electrographic change consistent with seizures. However, you can also have just electrographic seizures, meaning there is nothing on the outside that you can see that would make you aware that the patient is seizing. And so seizures have that definition. On top of that, when you give certain seizure medications like phenobarbital, it causes something called uncoupling, meaning the clinical activity is no longer present, but the baby is still seizing. So you've given phenobarbital, you feel better, the baby does not feel better, and may actually be feeling worse. Because of this, we recommend EEG monitoring. In all ICU patients, regardless of age, there is a higher likelihood of having electro electrographic seizures only. And then when you use medications like phenobarbital or phosphonatoin, you're more likely to have uncoupling and therefore you have lost your neurologic exam as a simple EEG monitor. And you need to rely on a better test to assess whether your patient is actually still seizing or not, and that your intervention of giving them IV phenobarbital was effective or not. So for example, if you intubate a patient who is in respiratory distress, everyone gets a chest x-ray and a blood gas afterwards to make sure the position of the ET tube is correct and that you are effectively ventilating the patient. So no different. As neurologists, we are not wizards. There's no way for us to know if the medication that you've given for seizures are actually efficacious without a follow-up test to know, especially when those medications can cause uncoupling of the clinical from the electrographic activity. Now there's another word called status epilepticus that is often used, and again, the clinical definition of status epilepticus means 20 to 30 minutes of continual seizures or having two seizures without a return to baseline in between. Because the concern is that we are aware there are subclinical seizures, electrographic seizures, therefore you may not be able to see them and that absence of return to baseline between the seizures raises the concern that that patient may be having electrographic only seizures. The EEG definition of status epilepticus means 50% or more of an hour's worth of recording in seizures. So this is different, again, an EEG definition of seizures versus a clinical definition of seizures in status epilepticus. Um, the EEG definition of seizures mean 10 seconds or more of an electrographic activity that has that kind of pattern of beginning, middle, and end that we typically see with seizures, and that is the EEG definition of seizures.